you. Thanks, Tobias. Jason, we get this bunch of collar stones over that last mountain pass, we be dropping them ten feet down in the valley of the promised land. And to think of it, it's old sweet Betsy that's seeing us through safe. You made this, Jason. I'm going to tell you something. That's the sweetest piece of shooting iron I ever laid a grip on. Came Tucky Rifle. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, don't you remember sweet Betsy from life who calls her? Tell you, Jason, we've lost nigh on to three days because of it. Oh, it won't take long, Mr. Williams. To fix so many wheels this trip, I reckon I could be a master wheelwright. But it couldn't happen at the worst time. There ain't enough water left to brew coffee, much less water the stock. It ain't water what's bothering me, it's them engines. I mean, it's the time that we'll be wasting. It frets me. I promised up Bill Ben I'd be back in time to take him up to Arkansas for a bit of trapping for the first snow. I had some extra spokes made in Independence. Just give me a few men to help. We won't hold you up long. And it ain't just this break here that I'm worrying about, Daniels. It's all the other things that's happened to this wagon. And all the other things that's likely to happen when we get into them hills and mountains beyond them. It's those rifles of Clay's. They make too heavy a load for the wagon. Ever since we picked them up in Independence, we've been having trouble. We didn't have any before. Now, are you anxious enough to have me and my rifles back at Independence? First thing, you thought you'd have engines jump out at you at every bush. As far as I'm concerned, you can take your rifles and yourself and... Wait a minute, this ain't no time to be arguing over what's important and what ain't. If I recollect right, Foster, you made a bargain with Jason here that you'd carry his rifles on your wagon, and he'd look after the wagon to see that it got through. Seems like that was the time to do your arguing when you made your deal. Not out here in this engine country with a broken wheel. He's right. Because I'm holding up the wagon train just 30 minutes, not a single minute more, to give you the time. Any man that can put them folks in there like that is better than good. I say, let's get in on that wagon, right? Come on, man. Let's get. The What's the matter? It's the axle. What? 
snap plumbing, too. Oh, we in some real trouble. Uh, Preacher Bentley, you wouldn't have a piece of tough timber on your wagon like a piece of old hickory or something, would you? I'm sorry to the vice and sure wish we had. Luke, you carrying any timber on your wagon? No. I'm carrying enough stuff to take care of my family and their kinfolk, too. You ain't got room for no timber. No, 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 I ain't got enough. Oh, here come the wagon, boss. Time's up, Clay. We'll make room for all of you on the other wagons. But there's no room for any boxes and barrels or such. We've got room for three more in our wagons, Jed. And I can take the women in my rig. Reckon carried like that anyhow, having some women folk to talk to, even if it be a bit crowded like. Well, I'm staying with my rifles. Ain't nobody here has to stay with me. But I think I can fix that wagon if I can get a little help. I'm staying with you. I'll still be in time to meet Bill Bent for the first snow. I'll give you a hand, too. It'd be kind of good to be doing some work for a change instead of sitting in that jogging wagon all day long. <laughs> Mr. Williams, nobody knows better than me what them rifles mean to Jason. We can be fixing this Conestoga and catch up with your wagon train in no time. All we need is a body, too, to help. Well, I, I ain't one to stand in your way. Luke here's a good man. Suppose he stays, and Lon Setter, to help out you and the other. No, I, I think it only go on with the Lon. Uh, I'll stay. Thanks, Jed. Don't worry, we'll make it. Are you serious, Williams, about leaving a wagon behind like this? We have an agreement, too, and I paid you good money to join this wagon train. If you don't want to stay forced, you can go with the women. I'll take care of your outfit, like I said when I signed on. Be sure that you do. And be sure that everything is still on the wagon when you catch up. Wait a minute. You've got no call to worry. I know Jason a long time. I never know him to take what ain't rightfully his. Tobias is right, and we're all a wasting daylight. Luke, suppose you and Lon borrow some water off in your wagons. Then this wagon train's got to be shoving on. Get your things in me. We're moving on. You may join us if you wish, Cordy. I'm not going. Like Reuben says, it'll only be an hour or so before we're back with the wagon. Anywhere he stays is good enough for me. But, Cordy, suppose something should happen. Oh. I mean, something like... Reuben's right, Cordy. You really ought to be up ahead with the wagon train, where Dr. Hawkins is, just in case. Oh, he isn't anywhere near my time, child. I ought to know. Then I'll stay, too. But you can't stay, Amy. I won't let you take the chance. You're going ahead with me. Well, seems like Mr. Clay isn't the only one around here who likes to give orders. Maybe you like a man to give orders. Maybe that's why you stay back with a wagon so you can be near Clay and take orders from him. I just talked to Mr. Williams, the wagon boss. He figures you ladies can join the women folks up ahead in the train. Reuben? Maybe you can fix some kind of comfortable like on Luke's wagon. Well, Tobias, uh, Cordy says she ain't going. I'm not going either. You see me? You take the advice from an old hand, you join up with that train. Since Mr. Clay is in charge of this wagon, I'll follow his advice. If he thinks I should go, let him say so. coming with me. You're my woman. Mr. Forster, we're not married yet. And I'm staying. Jason. Back there just now, I told Foster I never knowed you to take anything what wasn't rightfully yours. Anything make you change your mind, Tobias? I don't know yet. Maybe? Yeah. There's something. 
Amy. She belonged to Foster long before we joined up with this dream. You got no call to let her stay knowing what you do. Except maybe you can get Ida's to change things, huh? Anybody else say that to Vice, he'd be swallowing his words along with his teeth. Uh, I'm sorry, Tobias. I didn't mean that. Son, we've been together a long time on trails like this. Tender feet like these. How many times do you wish we had a rifle like this? You made them, son. At Kentucky. And we gotta see that they get through the folks who has them needing for them. You put a rifle like that in the hand of a settler, you give him safe passage through engine country without getting his hair lifted. And protection for his farms and ranches. You've got four cases of fine Kentucky rifles on that wagon. A hundred good reasons why I was sold on that train should reach Fort Ben alive. And I used to stay with you. Till you get there and set up a shop. And you make a Kentucky for every settler who has a wanton for one. But there's just one thing, Jason. Rifles and women don't mix. We're moving up. I wouldn't waste any time get that wagon fixed, Jason. The women join us or no? Oh, they're going, the son. They're staying. They're staying with the wagon. Well, if that's the way you want it. I don't have to tell you to keep an eye peeled and your rifle's ready. Good luck. Carrie! Carrie, I gotta stay with the wagon, what's busted? Be awfully careful, Luke. Now don't you worry none, Carrie, honey. Old Luke will be back in his outfit before the sun sets, and that's a fact. Now you be a good boy, Clyde. Bye-bye, Daddy. I love you. Goodbye, honey. Yo-ho! Ronnie! <laughs> To look at them rocks. We can I spot a piece of tough timber in the foothills. Reuben, we gotta lighten this wagon so we can get it off the ground. I figure if Tobias finds us a piece of timber, we can make a new axle and take off. All right, Clay. Your brother Ruby. There we go. Yes, the preacher. There's one. All right. Let me have a hold of that. Yeah, I help you. Yeah, I'm setting this down. Oh, my beautiful China. Dump your own stuff, Clay. If this wagon needs to be lightened, your rifles are the heaviest things in it. You don't understand, Forster. If there's any engine trouble, those rifles are our only chance. You fools. Every one of you. All you're doing is letting Clay talk you into risking your lives for his rifles to get through. His precious rifles. 
As for me, I'll take my chances with the Indians. If we see any Indians. We got one chance of getting this wagon through, and that's to lighten the load. Not just for now, but permanent. Rigging don't make much difference how rough this stuff's handled. I'm afraid the engines will get it anyway. Cordy, honey. Are you sure you're all right? I mean, you don't need old Doc Hawkins? Oh, no. Anything like that, why, well, you'd be the first to know, Reuben. Yeah, but just suppose it. Oh, no, no, it isn't yet. You know, you are fretting like, a, like an old hen. Besides, if it was my time, women have had babies without doctors before. Since the beginning of time, I, I'm nothing special. Special to me, honey. Mr. Tobias. We didn't see any Indians. Oh, stop Don't change us. Jesus, you're going crazy. So it started already. Well, let me tell you something, Jason. You're going to get all the fighting you're hanging for. Both of you. There's Comanches out there, and from the signs, they're sticking mosquitoes on the Call River. You find that timber out there front axle? Not on the prairie. Only a crazy man would be fool enough to ride up in the hills this time of day. Come on, and we'll find some timber. Tobias, you figure maybe them engines is setting up there fixing to, to trail the wagon train? Maybe someone, me, ought to, ought to ride out to warn them. It ain't fair to let them sit there like fish in a barrel. Look, them's Comanches. They ain't about to tackle anything their size. Your wife and kids you're worrying about, you can make your mind easy, son. Yeah, when there's such thing as a cripple wagon around, they ain't about to tackle a great big wagon train. But I could get a horse and ride there in no time at all. Nobody leaves this wagon, Luke. That's an order. And I'll shoot the first man that tries it. I don't know how to pick a woman, Reuben. I ever find me a woman that can cook like your Cordy, I get myself hitched up right now. You gotta learn them, Lon. You wouldn't believe it, but before we got married, Cordy couldn't even cook water. Water? What I really need is a little Mountain Dew to sort of wash it down. Contraption there uses water. I ain't about to see any hours waste. Who said anything about wasting it, Mr. Tobias? You know, like the Reverend said, a body's got to have food for the spirits. Seems like you want spirits instead of food. I won't take that contraption and put it away. We got some work to do. I thought maybe just. No, no. Go ahead. Put it up. Yes, sir. I think that fellow's in the wrong business. 
That's right, Lon. Exactly right. Them Comanches could come in here and lift my hair right now. Yours, too. Wouldn't mean anything except to us. But you let something happen to these horses, that wagon ain't got a prayer of ever reaching Hastings Creek again. Are you either? Uh, listen, uh, Mr. Tobias, you know all about Indians. Mm-hmm. You think there's going to be trouble? Trouble? Lon, I reckon the whole world's going to have its share of trouble. Now, you take them tender feet that just left us up ahead in them Conestoga wagons. They're pushing west. And ain't no trouble going to stop them. Of course, they've heard about them high mountains out there that reach up and nearly touch God. And the big green trees and the streams that are full of fish, forests full of game that's all waiting there just for that. But, Lon, They'd never make it if they didn't have that Kentucky rifle. Trouble? Sure, they'll meet up with trouble. They'll probably run into a Sioux war party, sitting on paint ponies, sacks of arrows across their back, streaks of paint on their bodies, standing out like a blazing sun. And them Sioux will be itching for trouble. Sioux could out-soldier them, out-smart them, out-fight them. Well, I guess they could whip them. If they didn't have that? Yes, sir. Well, I don't want you to do something for me. Take a hold of that cane tuck. Side it in. Give it a trigger, slow, smooth, easy squeeze. Yeah. Ain't tell a thing of beauty. Hey, Lon, you know what I call that? <laughs> sweet Betsy from Pike. Oh, don't you remember sweet Betsy from Pike who crossed the high mountain with her lover, Reich, with two yoke of oxen and one yellow dog, a tall Shanghai rooster and a one spotted hog. Give me that gun. Ain't that a thing? Yes, sir, Lon, you take that bunch of Comanches out there. They see a wagon like this broke down. They keep an eye on it. Anything happened to cripple us, they'd be in here in a minute. Well, as long as we got sweet Betsy here and we keep our powder dry and our eyes open, we ain't gonna have no trouble with them engines. Don't you worry, son. I go let them engines get you. Come on, let's go. I mean. Cordy? Well, she chose to be with Reuben. Huh? I think that she had a right to be. I should have made Amy leave. Only I didn't. And Tobias? Maybe you're right. I did what I figured I, I had to do. Don't you remember sweet Betsy from Pike, who crossed the high mountain with her lover Ike, with two yoke of oxen and one yellow dog, a tall Shanghai rooster and one spotted hog. Their wagon broke down with a terrible crash, and out on the prairie rolled all kinds of trash. A few little baby clothes done up with care. Oh, ow. Mr. Tobias, 
Mr. Tobias. What are you going wrong? Oh, I found Luke's watch. You did? Yeah. Oh, this note was with it, too. Well, Reed, what did it say? Well, uh, Mr. Tobias, huh? you're not going to believe this, but I can't read. You can't? No, sir. Would you read it? What's it say? Well, it's written pretty close to the paper. Yes. It says, uh, mm. Luke's gone. Crazy coot. He wouldn't do a thing like that. He just had to get back to that wagon train. He couldn't wait, could he? Didn't worry about any of the rest of us getting there or not, huh? Well, what did you expect him to do? Just sit here with his wife and child up ahead with the wagon train? And leave us out here shorthanded when we need every man and animal we can get to fight our way back? It seems to me, Clay, that your high-handed methods are putting us all in danger. Come on, Tobias, let's get saddled up. You're not gonna go and leave us here. Don't you worry, Lon. Now nah, we're not leaving you, Lon. We gotta find a piece of timber so we can make an axle. Besides, Faust and Reuben will stand watch over you. Is there anything wrong, son? You know, preacher, when we get to California, I'm gonna get Miss Amy to learn me how to read. And I'll be able to read just as good as Mr. Tobias can. Yes. Oh, Luke's gone. What? Yeah. Mr. Tobias. Is there anything I can do here for you while you're gone? Yeah, preach. You can say a prayer for Luke. I'm ready. Anytime you are. Ready for what, preacher? To repent, Lon. To repent. Lon, I... I've seen that still you brought with you. And Lon... <clears throat> Tain't it very good, but... Remember what Jason said about just having to get them rifles of his and through on time, because maybe the lives of every man, woman, and child in his wagon train depended on it? Yes, hmm? sir. Yeah. Well, not only our lives, son, but maybe the lives of hundreds of other people to come, people he ain't never seen, maybe never will see. You see, his job is saving lives. My, my job is saving souls. You see, Lon, the Lord has smiled on this land. He's made it rich and fruitful. And just as sure as a honeybee will find the dogwood blossom in the springtime, just as so will there be thousands of people coming along here on this trail we made, a father on us. And, you know, they're going to need the word of the Lord just as much as they're going to need them Kentucky rifles. And it's for them poor souls that I'm painting these signs here on the rock.
wish they'd get on with it. I'd feel a lot better if we were on our way. Seems like Luke here's due a decent bearing. Since we got a preacher here to give him one. Appears to me like folks is in such a hurry nowadays, rushing from one end of the land to the other. They ain't got no time left to be good Christians. The more time we lose, the more chances are stacked up against us. Let's bury him and get to work on that wagon. It's the living that count, not the dead. Lord, we might press for time, but we know that you'll keep an eye peeled for us while we say the word over our dear departed brother. You see, Lord, Brother Luke here. Brother Luke has had a hard road to hold. But I reckon he's found a resting place at last, Lord. A resting place beside your knee for all eternity. And please, Lord, have mercy on his soul. Now, brothers and sisters, I'll, I'll line the hymn up for you. going to let them come in? What for? All they're looking for is a handout. Looks blood still fresh on their hands. Well, maybe if we give them all the goods, they'll let us through the pass. Foster, there's some Indians I'd rather trust than white folks. That bunch of Comanches out there like a bunch of scavengers. Even other Indians don't trust them. Maybe, Tobias, you're wrong. Maybe, like Daniel says, if, if we talk to them. Please. Jesus. You've got no business even thinking of trading with them. You know that. All right, Miss Amy. That's the way you want it. All right, if you got to do your palaver, let's get on with it. Me. Talk for chief. All this is land. All who pass through must bring gifts to Chief. Well, tell Chief this is free land. We do not come to harm Chief, but live in peace with him. And already one of our people have been murdered. Chief say, many bad Indian in pass. Ye not know what bad Indian do. But he will be responsible if we pay him. He'll let us go through the pass without harm. If we give him all this. Savvy? Not my rifles, Foster. You dang fool. We'll see who's the fool. I told you I could make a deal, and I have. Jason. Jason! Jason! Simmer down. No good gonna come from letting them varmints know that we're at each other's throats. Don't do here! Rifles stay here. I do you. I get eh? Taka Basoka. Chief say you must give all gifts laid before him. Or be known as man who word like water. Well, you tell your chief that to call a white man a liar means death. Nakaska, I stay. Chief say, death come to white men who lie, and squaws, for he have many braves. We'd better humor him, Clay. We'll never get out of here. One thing you can bet on, Foster, we give him those rifles we want. 
You think after what you've seen them do to Luke, they're gonna keep their solemn word? Yeah. Now, your chief don't understand. We can't give up these rifles. Maybe it is not Chief who is liar. Maybe it's you. Kahia, Agata, OGG. Chief C, you, good warrior, but you few, we many. Chief C, he no afraid gun. That arrow of his warrior seek you out with great cunning. Just tell your chief to keep his eye on old sweet Betsy here. I can't see it. I can't hit the hair on Luke's grave. If I can't see it, Sure, asking you now. Not for myself, but for the folks still in this wagon with me. You gotta help me knock that air off of Luke's grave. So I can show these Comanches the power of this Kentucky rifle. And maybe we can go through this land in peace without any bloodshed. So, I'm putting myself in your hands. Amen. Thank you. 
door sound is a rifle, Tobias. You sure made sweet Betsy sing? He's okay, Doc. Shoot that center. Donald Boone himself couldn't have done it slicker. Poor nothing, Lord. Ask Jason. Once on a bet, I split a pew on the point of a boy and I've had a hundred pieces. No. Careful of your boasting, Tobias. Pride goeth before fall. It was the Lord's eye that sent that bullet. How'd that preacher know? Just a minute, Clay. I say we could have made a deal with those Indians, but you chose to fight them instead over your precious rifles. I'm sorry you feel like talk too plain to them Comanches, Forster, but I've dealt with them and their likes a long time. And I ain't ever seen soft words stop Comanche's errors yet. I got a job to do getting that wagon through without losing any more lives than I have to. Now, first, we're gonna get this wagon fixed. And nobody beds down till we do. Oh, 
coming out of the wagon. What do you think, Tobias? They coming in? I don't know. Don't worry, Andy. Oh, hey. Come on, Andy. Come on, quick. All right. Uh, careful, careful, that child. All right. Be very careful, oh, honey. What are you going to do, Clay? You can't go out there alone. I've done it before. Ain't nothing to worry about. But maybe Daniel's right. Maybe if we gave him the rifles. I can't do it, ma'am. These rifles are like a trust to me. If they fall in the engine's hands, ain't a wagon train that can move up and down this trail in safety. Can't you see that? It'd be like murdering my own folks. I just sick and tired of your thick headedness. You know doggone well who I'm a praying for. I think you had enough. That old chief ought to send men out here to do a man's work. You come out now, girls. Oh, gone if old Clay ain't done some trading with them Indians they won't soon forget. We aren't out of the woods yet, Tobias. And maybe you'll be glad to do a little smart trading before we're through. Do you think he's all right? If you're thinking about Clay, man, you can make your mind easy. He ain't engine born yet can take that in measure. seems a, a sin and a shame to me. All God's children murdering each other like this. And all for what? For nothing. There's room here plenty for all of us. Now maybe you'll listen to me, Clay. There was no need for anyone to get hurt, not even Luke. If we act like civilized people. Can't you see he's hurt defending us, all of us? Can't you stop your bickering even now? At least, Daniel, he had the gumption to go out and do something, not just talk. I'm through talking. From now on, I'm going to start doing. One night. Yes, ma'am. 
moving around with that wound. I'm practically as good as new. I was in good hands, you know. Yes, sir? Would you round the folks up for breakfast, Lon? Anybody's hungry, better hurry up. It's not going to last long. Hurry! Here's something for Cordy, Reuben. Thank you, Miss Amy. I'd like to say a little blessing to Brother Foster was around. Where is Foster? Foster! His horse is missing over there. That fool must have taken off in the night. Let him go. Any man figures he can buy his way through life. Ain't nothing but a Comanche air gonna teach him any better. Go on after that doggone fool. You as big a doggone fool as he is. That's all I gotta say. What about the rest of these folks? His life worth risking theirs? It'll be all right, Tobias, even if you can't see as far as you claim you're used to. If I'm not back in an hour, start packing up and head out. Brother Tobias! Huh? You take your hat off, please. I'd like to say a little blessing. Dear Lord, for what we are about to receive, make us duly grateful. Amen. Amen. Jason! Go on. But you're going to find out that women and rifles don't mix. Chief, that this rifle is trained on his heart. One twitch of the finger and he dies. I'm glad you came, Clay. I made a deal here with the chief. He gets everything on the wagon. We get back our horses and safe passage. Now, don't be a fool, Foster. You can't make a deal with what ain't yours. You get over here. I can't hold him off all day. <laughs> Why, gee, you heard the thing. Chief Tell, this one here. You accept gift of rifle. Let your people go in peace. But you, chief of white men, you must say whether this one speak truth or fork tongue. I'm willing to sacrifice all my goods. The least you can do is give up the guns. Well, I'll even pay you for them. You won't lose a thing. There's a lot more a man can lose, Foster, besides his rifles or money. Jason, you've got to give them those rifles. If you don't, they'll kill me. Do you hear? They'll kill me. Foster, if I give them these rifles, maybe they will let you go. But once they get them, they're gonna attack that wagon as sure as shooting. If it were Tobias and me, it wouldn't be no problem. But I can't speak for Cordy and Reuben and Blonde and Preach. Miss Amy. Up with him at the wagon and you here. Tell your chief I'll go back to the wagon and talk it over with the others. It's for them to decide now. What about me? I made the offer in the first place. You'll stay. When we get rifle, you go free. Cody, I 
don't think I'm going to be pretty busy when we start over that pass. So I brought you something here. For your baby boy. Oh. The Shanghai ran off and the cattle all died. That morning the last piece of bacon was fried. For I got discouraged and Betsy got mad. And the dog drooped his tail and looked wondrously sad. Thank you, Tobias, very much. You won't leave without him. He had no business leaving, Amy. Not after Clay told him to stay. I, I didn't mean Daniel. He went of his own accord. I, I was thinking of... Jason, you don't have to spell it out. Miss Amy, he was thinking of you. That's why he went after Foster. He thought that's the way you wanted it. Miss Cody, ain't no use for you to carry on, so it ain't like it was your man that was missing. And uh, I'd bet my last red cent Jason ain't gonna be missing long. Not unless there's more Comanches out there in them hills than I think. Reuben? Cordy. Cordy, is it? I'm afraid it is my time now. Oh, I... I didn't want it to be yet. I'm not afraid, honey. This isn't the first baby that was ever born. It's certainly not going to be the last. And they've been born by the thousands. With, with no doctors anywhere near. I just... I just wanted him to be born when, when there wasn't so much to do. When you didn't have so much on your mind. I wanted him to be a, a pure pleasure to you, Reuben. Not a hindrance. Honey, everything's going to be all right. You just wait and see. And Cordy, I tell you what. We'll name him Clay. Don't you worry, Reuben. I'll take good care of her. Thank you, Miss Amy. Oh. Oh. Can't we get a moving to bias? There may still be time to reach old Doc Hawkins. I reckon the hour's up, Reuben. You can start any time you want to. That boy Clay was here. Hope nothing happened to him. <laughs> what are you doing, Amy? Counting your linen at a time like this? We'll need clean things for swaddling clothes. Couldn't let you use them pretty things. Well, we've got lots of ass. No better way to use them, Cordy. Not that I can think of anyway. Thank you. Are you all right, Cordy? Is there anything I can do? I'm just fine. You know, I... I thought I was going to be afraid. Scared to death. But I'm not. You're just wonderful. I hope you know how I feel someday. With the right man. Good to see you, boy. I wasn't fretting about you one night, like some folks I know. Boston made a deal to turn over the rifles in return for safe passage. I've come back to see what they want to do. Jason, you're joshing. Else you've been out of the sun too long. Since when you start asking ten to feet what to do and what not to do, where Comanches is concerned. I don't joke about things like engines or rifles, Tobias. 
There's 30 or 40 Braves covering that pass, maybe more. If it was just up to you and me, there'd be no question. We'd fight. But too many people here think that Foster's right. I'm not gonna make them risk their lives for my rifles. Since when you start getting scared, Angels? They're my rifles, Tobias. If I want to give them to the engines, I got a right to. Sure, man's got a right. Man's got duties, too. First time I ever know you put your rights in front of your duties. Now, hold on, Tobias. You ain't got no call to talk to me that way. He's only doing what everybody said he ought to have done right straight along. Trade them rifles of his and for these precious lives. Preacher, you don't know what you... I believe Preacher's right, Tobias. Before Foster left, he said that... What happened to Foster, Clay? Engines. They're holding them till they get the rifles. There. That's all the more reason Clay's right. If we don't give them them rifles, Foster's a goner. Then I'd say good riddance to him. This will be the first time I ever know a man putting a Kentucky rifle in the hands of Comanche. And if you put enough of them in the hands of them Comanche, they'll take scalps from here to St. Louis. You're wrong, Tobias. I know you're wrong. It isn't wrong. And every one of us knows it deep down inside. Sure, nobody wants to die. I don't. You don't, Reuben. Neither do any of our friends up ahead in the wagon train. But you can't buy your freedom the way you buy your pork at so many Kentucky rifles per pound. Jason, a little while ago, I thought I hated you. I didn't hate you. I envied you. You knew what was right, and you had the courage to do it. Maybe without even realizing it, I may have loved you. Now, when I realize that you were right all the time, that we can't put rifles in the hands of men who will use them wrongfully our friends, people we haven't seen before, people who aren't even born yet, like Cordy's baby. You say, let's do it. What kind of a man are you, anyway? Miss Amy, he knows what's right. If you pardon me, ma'am, you just kind of twisted his thinking cap. All he thinks is you want Foster, and if Foster's what you want, Foster's what you'll get if he has to sell his soul to the devil. That's all. Well, Reuben, Let's take a vote. You want to give them heathens them Kentucks or don't you? Oh, Lon! What about Lon? A preacher? Tobias? I'm a man of peace. And I think that one human soul is worth 10,000 of them rifles of his. So I think maybe he's right in trying to make a tree. That's the way you want it. That's the way it's going to be. Good boy. Jason, they're wrong. I, I'm sure of it now. What can we do? They're entitled to speak their piece. And I told the Comanches I'd stick for their word. Well, I never heard of such foolishness. First, I think you're going to bomb me over Miss Amy. I'm sorry. I declare if I don't think Jason's been out in the sun too long. I'm sorry, Mr. Tobias. I had to go uh... to the right. more back there at the wagon. I reckon it don't make much difference where them varmints lift my hair. The result's the same. Doggone it, Jason. Have you gone plumb loco? Hey, no, you're chewing it all over again, Tobias. I give my word, and who knows, maybe it works. You're talking more like them tender feet every day.
Tell you, Chief, we give up our rifles. But tell him to give us his word, he'll lay down his bows and arrows and leave us go in peace. Man, Chief, lay down arrow. Now, here. We keep word. You go in peace. Go back to the wagon now and bring the rifles here. You'll be all right now, Foster. You understand? Jason, you're dead wrong about these varmints. Get him back to the wagon. Yeah. Oh. Trying to warn us. Sorry, Amy. I, I thought I was doing the right. Come here, Jesus! Well, get lost in that wagon, quick! No. Get them rifles out of there! Believe me, here. I'll, I'll be all right. Let them come close enough so you don't waste your shot. Let them have it. What I told you, give that trigger a slow, smooth, easy squeeze. Catch you. You got your Adam's apple jumping up and down like a cockroach on hot stool. Simmer down here and choke yourself for sure. And now, Lon, now is the time to fire! Shut up. 
boy was in the wrong business. Lon! You barn! What's the matter? Here! Get out of here! Load up some more of them cane tucks, because they might come back. Cut up! Cut up! Go Take us away. Oh. Oh. The Lord take us away, but the Lord give us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Well, we best be moving on before darkness sets in. I reckon them Comanches have got enough, but a body can't tell what they'll be up to next. It uh, could be we ain't gonna see no engines for a while, but we're gonna be mighty careful just the same. Reuben? Oh, Reuben. You best drive the wagon. Preach will be with you. The bias and line will bring up the rear and our right point. Now we're all tired and thirsty and beat. And maybe the Comanches will be figuring on that. So keep a sharp eye open. And if we're jump your head for the wagon, there's plenty of loaded rifles there ready for us. <laughs>
white man. Rifle, speak quick death. Comanche, no fight. White man, go in peace. Comanches say they're willing to let us go through without a fight. That ain't the way I'd do it. I'd get a running start and blast them heathens from here to kingdom come. I figure not, Tobias. I figure maybe they got their bellies full, and if we start shooting, maybe they don't run. But some of us going to get hurt, especially if they're riding in that wagon. Why have we stopped? Checking up. Everything's just going to be fine. All right, now. I'm moving up. Come here, Lord. Start getting trigger happy with that cane tucky. You ain't supposed to fire till Jason gives the word, you hear me? Please, Mr. Tobias, don't start picking on me, please. I reckon I ain't no more jittery than nobody else. Now get out of here. I still think that boy's in the wrong business. Tobias, it's mighty quiet. I'm scared. What do we need to get you, Lorne?
Hold your fire, Lon. No use adding to the excitement that's going on up ahead. Besides, you can't shoot till Jason gives you the order. But they started it. Oh, no. It was just one of them. It's one of them got his dander up. I think Clifford don't think that I was shot by an Indian named Lon. Lon, do me a favor. Go get Jason, will you, please? But you're hurt bad, Mr. Oh, Boss. I can't leave you. Nothing the matter with me, son. Go get Jason, will you? Go ahead. <laughs> Jason, looks like you fixed to drop them ten feet into that valley to promised land. Tobias ain't going with you. You remember back here where I told you that rifles and women, women don't mix? Well, it looks like they do. <laughs> She's up here waiting for you. Pretty soon you'll be taking her out. Well, them high arms reach up and nearly touch God and them big green trees. You be setting up a shop, Jason, and you... You start making these keen thugs. Ain't they a thing of beauty? Oh, don't you remember, sweet Betsy? Oh. 